you pray with me? God, we thank you that as we open up your word again and find hope therein, we understand, God, that you are with us and that we'll get through this. A couple Sundays ago, we started this sermon series, God, and we talked about how Joseph found himself in a pit, that he was placed there by his own family, no less, and we discovered that we, like Joseph, have found ourselves in some pits, and we learned some incredible lessons while inside those. We learned, God, that the pit isn't the final place that we're planted. And like that donkey I talked about who was unable to get out of a pit and was therefore going to be buried in that same pit, and when the dirt was being thrown on top of him, he learned, God, how to shake that dirt off. And what was meant to bury him, he used to buoy him out of that pit, God. And then we learned that... You are with us even in the pit like our friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God. You are with us wherever we might find ourselves, whether through the water or in the fire. And God, we learn that while in the pit, what others meant for evil, you always work for our good. So God, keep working that good in our lives, just like we take those ingredients, God, of a cake, that by themselves, those individual ingredients are not so tasty. But God, when you put the ingredients together of our lives, we trust that you were making of our lives something beautiful and tasty. God, thank you for this opportunity to help us find the good in the midst of the pits in which we find ourselves. But God, we thank you today that when we get knocked down, we get back up again. Be with us, God, as we open your word. And one more time, find hope therein. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have you ever encountered that bounce-back clown that Larry just read about in our uh, contemporary word for today that was from Max Lucado's book, You'll get through this. Have you ever encountered that kind of bounce-back clown? I have to confess that as a child, I had one of those. And, of course, as you might imagine, it was one of my favorite toys. Uh, Who does not like to punch a clown right in the kisser and then have him bounce back up? You didn't even have to bend over and pick him up. He picked himself up. I mean, what more fun could you have with this bounce-back clown? I did my best, just like Max said, to level the clown many times. And I threw many punches. But there was something within him, something about him, that kept that clown on his feet. He was unfazed by the things that I threw his way. Lucado said, we do well to learn Bozo's secret. Life comes at us with the fury of flying fists a right hook of rejection, a sucker punch of loss. Enemies left and right hit below the belt. Calamities from every side cause us to stagger. It's truly, he said, a slugfest out there. We've been in the midst of some fights ourselves. So many folks, he said, get knocked down and they stay down. They give up. They stop fighting. They never learn Bozo's secret. Bozo had a ballast, a three-point lead weight hidden in his base that served as a counterbalance against the punches. A three-point anchor at that. Just look at what God can do. (laughs) Told y'all God's favorite number is three too. Isn't that great? Bozo's secret was his anchor. You know, Joseph had an anchor in him too. And you know, he learned that regardless of where he found himself, and he found himself in some really precarious situations, most of which were not his fault. You've been there. Joseph was thrown in a pit by his family. You've been there. I've been there. And you realize that, as our scripture lesson said this morning, they put him in a pit... And though Judah seemed to be compassionate and said, you know, let's not kill him. You realize he was looking to make some money off his brother. You've been there too, right? Somebody was trying to profit off your loss. And they sold their brother for 20 pieces of silver. 
Have you ever been sold out by somebody? Sold out by the people you trust. Come on now. Joseph was sold out by his brothers for a mere 20 pieces of silver. I hope that lasted them a while. But they had to split it 11 ways. Can you imagine the little bit they got? But saints, this is what hatred will do right. in people's life. Right. Joseph gets sold into slavery because others were jealous of the destiny with which God had blessed Joseph. And they sold him out and they sent him down to Egypt to an unknown foreign place far away from everything and everybody he knew. Joseph gets down there. And then he gets falsely accused of sexual assault against the king's wife. And he got thrown into prison. You see, they took that kind of stuff seriously back then. But anywho, he gets thrown into prison because of sexual assault, because that's usually what happens. And he stayed there. A friend of his was going to get him out and failed to keep his promise. And Joseph remains in a pit. But then he finally gets out because he had an anchor. And his secret was he trusted in God's destiny. You see, Joseph had these dreams. And Joseph believed that God had plans for him because God had shown him in dreams that God would be with him. And he trusted God with his life, even when his life didn't look like what he thought it ought to look like. You've been there when your life just doesn't look like you thought it would, right? Joseph believed in his destiny. Daniel, Daniel also believed in God and he trusted God for protection. You remember his story. It's one of those that we learned in Sunday school as a kid. It's one of those few stories that we still hold on to. You remember Daniel was faithful to God just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he was faithful to his task so much so that in, in Daniel chapter 6, when this story is told, Daniel has been promoted to one of three presidents in his land under King Darius's rule. And then they were over 120 other leaders that then led the people. I imagine those 120 leaders were probably like our Congress or something, I would imagine. And they were leading the people, and, Joseph, uh, uh, and Daniel was so good at what he did, and King Darius really liked him. But have you ever been successful at your job, and everybody else is not happy with your success? And they did everything they could to throw him off his game. I imagine they searched his emails. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. That one came to me on the way here, but anywho. But I imagine, you know, they look for ways. I mean, the scripture tells us they look for ways to try to trap him. And they could find nothing on him. I figure the FBI told them there was nothing there, right? And, and anyway, so they, they decide what, what can we get him on? And they realize that Daniel was a prayer warrior. Right. And that Daniel prayed three times a day. And they figured if they could get him off his game, this would be the way. And so they went to the king and they said, You know, king, for 30 days, you ought to make a decree that nobody can pray to anybody but you for these 30 days. And if they pray to anybody but you, you should throw them in the lion's den. And for some reason, the king agreed. Sometimes our ego gets the best of us. And we decide that, oh, that sounds like a good idea because then I'm elevated beyond where I should be. But anyway, 
The king agreed and Daniel remained faithful to his God. And three times a day, the scripture says, he goes up into his room and he opens up the windows and he prays aloud to his God. You see, as the old gospel song said, Daniel didn't have a closet religion. He didn't hide the God he served. He wanted to let the whole world know wherever he goes, he had to serve the Lord. And he kept praying. And guess who went and told on him? His co-workers. And as the decree went, he got thrown into the lion's den, just like the king promised. The king was disappointed because he really trusted Daniel. And he told Daniel as he followed his orders and was to throw Daniel into the lion's den, he said, My, I pray that your God whom you are faithful to will protect you as he threw Daniel into that pit. And Daniel stayed in that lion's den all night. And in the morning, the king arose and went down to holler to see, Daniel, are you still there? And to the king's surprise, Daniel was still alive. And he said, God sent God's angels to shut the lion's jaws. You see, Daniel, as the song says, used the lions for a mattress and a pillow. (laughs) And the angels rocked Daniel to sleep. Right, Daniel was faithful to his God amidst the lion's den because he believed that God would protect him. Saints, when you find yourself in the lion's den, when you find yourself a recipient of someone else's hatred, when you find yourself a recipient, a recipient of someone else's bigotry, when you find yourself in a situation where others will do any and everything to keep you down, trust in the foundation upon which you stand that there is nothing, no thing that could ever separate you from God's love because every time they try to knock you down, you're Faith will be the reason that you stand up again, just like Bozo. So bring it on, right? Bring it on. Saints, you know people will lie about you. You know they will do any and everything to keep you down. But saints, bounce back and trust in your foundation that God is with you in those times and don't let him keep you down. The best way you can defend yourself is to stand up to them and bounce back every single time. They win when you stay down. Get back up, saints. You know, my friend, a good friend of mine, he bounced back one time. Because he trusted in the call of God on his life. You see, God called him as a kid to lead worship. And he did that. And he followed God all over this country, singing God's praises. And though he knew there was something in him that most of the world would reject, he did it anyway. And then he did what many of us do. He did what he was supposed to do. And he got married and had a kid and got into a fairly large church and was leading praise and worship. And then he had to be honest with himself. And and when he did, he lost everything, his wife, his home, and that job because you see some people just can't handle the truth and people living with integrity in their life being honest about who they really are and he lost everything and he walked away from the church for quite a while but do you realize that God used a non-church person from halfway across the country to notice a billboard of an MCC several years before. And when God brought them both to the same area, God used that non-church person to help this called man of God to find MCC. And then just a few years ago, he walked into this very room and he led a concert for us. And it was that very moment that I saw God within him. And I recognized 
the incredible call of God on his life. And he sits here today leading us in worship because in the midst of all the pits that he found himself and in all the lion's dens that he found himself, he still trusted in his foundation that God had called him and you can never run away from God's call as much as you try. God will use you. And I appreciate the fact that God is using him in this very room. You see, saints, we fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. A saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up, right? May you trust in a God who gives us a foundation that allows us to bounce back from whatever may befall us. This is how we understand the secret of Bozo the Clown. May we trust in that foundation. And may God assure us that every time we get knocked down, we get back up again. The saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>